The 2023 road season is now just around the corner, and if you haven't already started a slow hand clap in anticipation of what's to come, I reckon you will be in just a few minutes' time. Coming up, why you should be very excited about the 2023 season. <laughs> This year has a lot to live up to when you look back at last year's racing, but I'm very confident that it will. First up, we are going to witness the tours down under for the first time since, well, since none of us even knew what COVID-19 was. It was back in the innocent days of January 2020 that Ruth Winder and Richie Port were crowned champions, but in just a few days' time, the races make a welcome return. And for the Santos Women's Tour Down Under, it returns as a World Tour race, which starts this coming Sunday, January the 15th. The men's six-day race commences on the same day as the women's concludes on Tuesday the 17th, and we will have many of the world's top stars battling it out for early honours on the roads of Adelaide. Matthews, Roseman Gannon, Hindley, Spratt, Hayter, Thomas, Froome, O'Connor, Ewan, Simon Yates, Capone, Brown, Vine, Groves, Platt, Chapman, etc., etc. You do not want to miss it, and you don't have to. You'll be able to catch all the action on GCN Plus, live or on demand. Territory restrictions do apply. And whilst there's no Willunga Hill this year, to me, it looks like one of the toughest ever editions of the race on paper, with only a couple of opportunities for the sprinters in the men's race. And of course, it's the first opportunity for all of us to see the new kits and bikes of the Pro Peloton. We've actually got Alex Payton on the ground, so keep your eye on GCN Tech for a whole host of videos that will be coming out in the forthcoming weeks. Soon after, the racing will come thick and fast to GCM Plus. The Challenge Mallorca, which has live coverage this year, and where Alaphilippe starts his season. The Vuelta San Juan, the Etoile de Bessege, Vuelta Balenciana, Algarve and Lucia, and then the opening weekend of Omloop Het Newsblad and Kuna Brussels Kuna. The cobbles are going to be here before you know it. So what rivalries are we most looking forward to this season? Well, top of my list has to be Pugaccia versus Vinegar 2.0. All being well, the two will again face each other, fit and healthy, at the Tour de France this July. UAE Team Emirates have been busy signing up support for Pogaccia this year. Whilst Vinegar will not have Roglic by his side this July, the man who was arguably the key to his success last year. Regardless, Jumbo Visma will undoubtedly have an extremely strong team. So will Pogaccia be able to regain his title? Well, he certainly won't want to be outshone for a second year in succession, so whatever happens, we can expect fireworks. The question beyond that rivalry is, can anybody else challenge those two riders? By July, it's going to be four years since Ineos Grenadiers won the Tour de France, and that was with Egan Bernal. Two questions now hung over the Colombian. One, can he get back to 100% after that awful accident this time last year? And two, if he does get back to 100%, will that be enough to compete with Vinegar and Pogaccia? With Geraint Thomas at the Giro d'Italia, more on that later on, Ineos will be hoping that the answer to both those questions is yes. Enric Mas, Jai Hindley and Richard Carapaz will all be aiming for the podium in July too. Now, the other big question around the Tour de France is, will Mark Cavendish be there? And if so, will he be able to take that 35th Tour stage win? Now, the speculation on the lead up to the race in July is going to be red hot, but who wouldn't love to see that fairy tale ending to his career? As we record this, his team for 2023 is yet to be announced, but there's a 99% chance he'll be racing with Astana. And it would seem very unlikely that they wouldn't take him to the Tour de France if that's the case. Talking of sprinters, I reckon this could be the year that the young guns get on terms with their older and more successful counterparts. Arno de Lee and Olaf Coy racked up 21 wins between them at smaller races last year, and surely they'll get opportunities at some bigger races this year. Given their results, we can expect to see them up against the likes of Grunewagen, Philipsen, Malir, Jakobsen, Cavendish and the rest at some point this year. So what about the early season then? Well, many eyes are going to be on Remco Evenepoel and whether or not he can come anywhere close to his incredible result of last year. 
He starts his season in the rainbow jersey at the Vuelta San Juan later this month, another race that you can catch live on GCN+. Now, it looks as though his next appointment after that will be a month later at the UAE Tour. That's a race that's been won by Pogaccia for the past two years, and the two of them going head-to-head -head is a mouth-watering prospect, particularly at a race where it's a real watts per kilo battle for the general classification. Now, it's going to be just the second time that we've seen those two battle it out at a stage race. The first one was Torino Adriatico last year, where Avonapool cracked on the Queen stage, won convincingly by Pogaccia. Avonapool is amongst a number of stars who are going to align at the Giro d'Italia in May. Primoz Roglic, Geraint Thomas and Thibaut Pino are also already confirmed, whilst Alexander Vlasov and Joao Almeida look set to compete there too. So as things stand, it looks a far more open race than the Tour de France. Filippo Ganna returns there after a one-year break and will look to keep his unbeaten record in individual time trials there, although that might be a tall order, with the brutal final mountain time trial looking like one for the pure climbers, uh, whilst Mass Pedersen will be at the Giro d'Italia for the first time and looking to complete his collection of stage wins at Grand Tours. Ahead of the Giro d'Italia, we have the classics. Starting with cycling's sixth monument, Strade Bianche. Like the Giro and all other RCS races this year, it's going to be available to watch in all GCN Plus territories, including New Zealand. Both the men's and women's races are taking place on March the 4th. Defending champions are Lotta Kopecky and Pogaccia, and whilst we currently don't have much of an idea as to who will or won't be there that day, you can almost guarantee an extremely strong lineup for both. From there, it'll be on to Milano San Roma on the men's side for the first official monument of the season and the Trofeo Alfredo Binder on the women's side. And soon after that, we'll be up in Northern Europe for the Cobblestones. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about the Cobblestones. The 10 days leading up to the Tour of Flanders is, in my mind at least, the best part of the season. Watching the stars battle it out at the smaller races that lead up to the big day. And what a day that will be. Pogaccia versus Van Aert versus Van der Poel at the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Make sure that you cancel everything in your calendar on Sunday, April the 2nd. Now, it feels as though Jumbo Visma will go into the cobbled races as the team to beat, having strengthened their classic squad further with the addition of last year's Paris-Roubaix winner Dylan van Baal. That said, Søren Crow anderson has joined Alpes in Phoenix and will offer welcome support to Van der Poel. Ineos Grenadiers' young guns will be one year stronger and wiser too. Tom Pidcock should be in the mix at those races, although his race programme is yet to be confirmed, but they've also got Magnus Sheffield and Ben Turner, both of whom were seriously impressive last year. But where does that leave Sudal Quickstep, the titans of the cobbled classics over the last few decades? They had a torrid cobbles campaign last year, with Fabio Jakobsen's win at Kuna Brussels Kuna their only reason to be cheerful. Patrick Lefebvre, the general manager, will not want a repeat of that this year, and he'll be hoping that Julian Alaphilippe is back to being Julian Alaphilippe after a season to forget for him last year. And what about Binyam Gurmai, the revelation of the 2022 Classics campaign, and a man who will start this year with more experience, and probably more strength and confidence too. Could he be Africa's first ever monument winner? You wouldn't put it past him, would you? Lotta Kopecky will be determined to get back to the form that saw her win both Flanders and Strade Bianca last year, whilst SD Works will once again be the team to beat in the Spring Classics this season, particularly with the addition of sprinter extraordinaire Lorena Vives. Trek Segafredo will be looking to topple them from their perch. They, of course, have won the first two editions of Paris-Roubaix Femme and will have the first of those winners, Lizzie Dignan, back racing this season after giving birth to her second child. However, the woman they all have to beat at almost every race this season is Annemiek van Fleurten. Uh, this will be her final year as a pro rider, but she's showing no signs of slowing down. Quite the opposite, actually. Last year, she won liege baston liege the World Championships, Omloop Het Newsblad, and the Grand Tour Triple, a season likely never to be repeated by anybody. But from what she said recently, she will be back to try and do exactly that this year. The rest of the peloton must be looking forward to the day that she retires, just to give somebody else a chance. But I reckon they'll also be relishing the opportunity to beat her fair and square this year. And where better to do that than the Tour de France femme, Alex Wift, at the end of July. After an incredibly successful inaugural event last year, we can expect this year's race to be even bigger and better. A little later in the year, after the Tours de France, we will have an early World Championships with a difference. 
Glasgow plays host to almost every type of cycling you can imagine this August, with close to 200 rainbow jerseys set to be awarded over 11 days of competition. And since it comes between the Tour de France and La Vuelta a España, as opposed to right at the end of the season, we could see the most competitive road races of recent decades. Riders coming out of the Tour de France on top form, and riders preparing for the Vuelta a España also on top form, clashing together. GCN Plus will of course have live coverage of those world championships with some territory restrictions, and that includes the mountain bike events. But they won't be the only mountain biking that we've got for you this year. We'll also have every single round of the UCI World Cup for the first time ever. Add to that all the world's major track events, and in just a couple of weeks time, the World Cyclocross Championships will take place in Ogareda, and the UCI Esports World Championships at the end of February, and this year we'll see more racing than ever on GCN Plus. So what other questions will be answered this season? Well, we'll find out whether Primoz Roglic recovers from his injuries of last season in time to make a serious challenge for the Giro title. We'll find out whether Fred Wright can finally take that elusive win, whether Lorena Vibes can keep up her incredible strike rate in sprint finishes, and indeed whether or not EF Education Easy Post will release their Grand Tour lineups with more than 12 hours to go to the start of the race. Uh, just before I finish, a reminder that on top of all the live racing, we'll be back with our pre- and post-race shows, The Breakaway, uh, starting with Omloop Het Newsblad in February, and then through all of the major classics and grand tours and the world championships. We'll also be back soon with The World of Cycling, our exclusive weekly show on GCN+. That'll be out every Wednesday, with the exception of during the grand tours, when we'll have it out on the rest days for you. Uh, we'll also have written previews and a whole host of other racing content for you on the GCN app, free to view, so make sure you check that out too. Right, I would love to know what you are most looking forward to watching or seeing unfolding this season. Let me know in the comments section down below and I look forward to having your company at all the live racing that we have this year.